want to expand people's vision of what sexuality involves in both animals and people. I want to um, show that there's a wide variety of non-reproductive sexual behaviors that go on in the animal world, both heterosexual and homosexual. Homosexuality, homosexual behavior is a stigmatized topic to look at within the field of zoology. It's not considered legitimate um, in a lot of ways. So if what appears to be sexual behavior is seen outside of a reproductive context, then its sexual aspects are denied because it's problematic to say that this is sexual behavior if it's not serving some other function. And this interacts with the whole question of sexual pleasure because um, the idea of animals experiencing pleasure or engaging in sex for pleasure has been a very difficult one for scientists to come to terms with. Even in a heterosexual context, it's, scientists, for example, deny the existence of female orgasm in non-human animals until it was proved, quote-unquote proved, um, by various means, by implanting electrodes in female monkeys' uterus to, you know, monitor contractions and, and so on. And so, um, Pleasure or evidence of pleasure is assumed not to exist unless proven otherwise. What I'm calling homosexual behavior actually falls into five different categories. Courtship, affection, sexual behavior, pair bonding, and parenting. And usually we find a combination of these behaviors in the same species, so you'll get sexual behavior accompanied by pair bonding, or uh, courtship with affectionate behaviors and co-parenting and so on. Often when same-sex activity is discussed, either in, in the scientific literature or in the more popular discourse, it's presented as something of an exception, something very puzzling. What I'm trying to say in the book is not that these behaviors don't serve social functions or that they can have non-sexual purposes, but that that doesn't cancel out its sexual aspects. So if we think about a sexual interaction in people, or a heterosexual interaction, for example, it can have many different meanings. It can serve a variety of social purposes in addition to being pleasurable or not. Bonobos have one of the most varied sexual repertoires of any species, engaging in a wide variety of both homosexual and heterosexual activities, from oral sex to manual stimulation of the genitals, masturbation, mounting of various types of genital rubbing between females and males, and so on. A wide variety of homosexual activities um, are also found in orangutans. These include things like um, fellatio between male orangutans, uh, genital fondling between female orangutans, anal intercourse sometimes occurs between males, especially younger males, and um, homosexual behavior sometimes occurs in the context of a special bonding or friendship-like association between two um, younger animals who may travel together over a few days. And this can also include affectionate behavior such as kissing and hugging and, and so on between um, the two partners. What I found and what I show in the book is that there's been a there's actually been a whole discourse of deviance surrounding homosexuality in animals that closely parallels the way that homosexuality has been interpreted and viewed in in people. There's a whole set of uh, biased or negative words that scientists use or have used uh, in describing homosexual behavior, things like perversion or as unnatural behavior or aberrant behavior, uh, you know, in extreme cases, as well as, you know, things like uh, inappropriate animals are interacting with inappropriate partners, that it's a result of animals being in captivity, like what people think happens in prisons among people, for example. The other thing that sort of developed as I was working on the project was this whole question of 
um, the social or cultural um, factors that contribute to the expression of sexuality and homosexuality in particular in animal communities. In this image, a female orangutan has uh, broken off a piece of a vine and is uh, using it to stimulate her genitals. It's important to consider the context of sexuality and the use of tools in sexual contexts when we're talking about um, tool use as well as the development of cultural behaviors in animals. Historically, uh, beliefs about uh, the occurrence of homosexuality in animals have been have been used in a wide variety of ways during different historical periods so today we tend to think of the occurrence of homosexual behavior in animals as supporting the cause of gay and lesbian rights let's say or the the biological basis for homosexuality and as i show in the book there have been completely opposite views at different time periods so for example in um, nazi germany uh, homosexuality was considered to be animalistic. Um, uh, homosexual men who were sent to concentration camps were classified as subhuman and homosexuals who were subjected to medical experiments in concentration camps were called test animals. And so we really have to be careful when we try to draw conclusions about humans based on animals. We have to remember that each animal species is a collection of individuals and so a behavior that you find in one individual or in one group of individuals isn't necessarily going to be found in the, the entire species and so we can't just talk about homosexual behavior in gorillas or even mounting behavior in gorillas we have to reference it to the gender and age of the partners as well as individual preferences I want to restore a sense of wonder about the animal kingdom and what goes on, the complexity of behaviors that are involved.